what's going on guys uh, sorry if i sound a little bit under the weather but uh i do have a little bit of a sore throat but uh we'll see what happens from here however uh this is a post fight uh analysis for uh espn plus and uh ufc on, uh, excuse me <laughs> Uh, Bellator on uh, DAZN and the Paramount Network. Um, so, Friday night fights for Bellator. Uh, the main event was the uh, was Michael Chandler versus uh, Benson Henderson, and uh, I thought it started out a really good fight. Uh, the first fight was uh, very very close. Uh, you saw Michael Chandler start off very strong. But then you saw Benson Henderson finish strong. Uh, sorry if you guys can hear my dog in the background. But, uh, yeah, I, the first round was, I, I'm sorry, the first fight was very, very close. Um, I very much thought that uh, it was very much, and again, you, you guys hear me say this a lot, I score every fight a draw. But unless either fighter scores a knockdown or has somebody in a submission that's very significant, or a uh, position on the ground that's very significant, then, I mean, these fights can be very close and they can be very closely contested. Uh, I gave a slight edge to Benson Henderson because of the way that he finished, but uh, I could see how you could still score that fight even, but uh, I disagreed with the decision in the first fight. Um, and in this fight, uh, Michael Chandler very much took the, you know, the decision out of the hands of the judges. Um, he knocked out Benson Henderson with a clean one-two, and he did it right underneath the uh, right hook of the southpaw of Benson Henderson. And Benson Henderson started off very strong in that fight. Um, now, it was pretty interesting to see Benson Henderson really uh, put pressure on that left side because he's a southpaw and he was throwing a lot of kicks, but then you saw Michael Chandler put pressure on with, with his footwork, and uh, you really saw him start to lean on his legs so he can get really get the power off of his punches uh and you saw that in his last fight with Sydney Outlaw when he fought him in Japan and he knocked him out uh that was supposed to be a rematch against Benson Henderson initially but uh you know regardless uh Michael Chandler actually ends his uh, last uh fight on his Bellator on his Bellator contract with a win a huge win a devastating win against a former two-time WEC and UFC a lightweight champion in Benson Anderson, who, when he was signed to the uh, uh, when he was signed to Bellator, uh, got immediate title shots against Andre Koreshkov, who was at the time the welterweight champion, and uh, Michael Chandler, who was the lightweight champion. So, me being a longtime fan of, I mean, this is just me personally, so I could be. This just could be my own bias, and I admit that. I really do believe that Benson Henderson should just retire. Uh, he talked about retiring at 35, 36 years old and maybe joining the uh, some sort of uh, reserve military service. Uh, I don't know if he's still eligible to do that, but uh, I think that would be the best thing for him uh, since that's something that he's been wanting to do and has talked about doing. Um, so... You know, we will see what goes uh, on from here for the future of Benson Henderson. But uh, for Michael Chandler, you could see him re-sign with Bellator. Uh, you could see him signing with the UFC. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he signed with 1FC to get back at uh, uh, Eddie Alvarez for just one last crack. Um, who knows? Who knows? Uh, he could even join the LFA. I mean, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Combat the Americas. I mean, there's a whole bunch. Oh, he can join Ryzen FC if he really wanted to. Um, there's a plethora of options out there for Michael Chandler. So if he wants to re-sign with Bellator, that's completely up to up to him. Uh, he's a uh, he's got he's kind of got some unfinished business with uh, uh, Patricio Pipple, not Patricky Pipple. Patricky Pipple, he's pretty much got his number, but Patricio Pipple, the uh, double champ at featherweight and lightweight, 145 and 155 at uh, Bellator. Uh, is a long time fighter at Bellator. I remember watching him fight uh, uh, Joe Warren on uh, uh, MTV2 way, way, way late at night. Um, and everybody was all up on UFC and WEC. Um, and everybody, everybody was still kind of recovering from uh, 
the downfall of Pride FC, but Bellator is kind of they kind of had their sleeper, their 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 little sleeper guys there. Um, Michael Chandler being one of them, Eddie Alvarez, Patricio Pipple, Patricky Pipple. Um, the list the the list is endless, especially the guys who come from uh, Bellator. Um, now ESPN Plus just ended, um, and it was Derek Lewis versus uh, Alexei Olenek. Uh, first of all, uh, Chris Weidman is actually back in the win column, uh, and it's very good for him because he very much looked like Chris Weidman of old. He was mixing up his strikes with his uh, wrestling, uh, and you actually saw... So, leading into this fight, I actually was told he uh, trained in South Carolina with uh, Steve Warnerboy Thompson and his camp and his team, but uh, in this fight, he actually worked a lot on, uh, on his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu, and uh, he really, excuse me guys, sorry about that, he really took it to uh, Omari Akhmedov in this fight, and uh, again, it was the Chris Weidman of old who was uh, looking for superior position, who was look, looking to rain down ground and pound, who was looking to suffocate uh, position and wear you down to look to advance a superior position to see uh, if he could fish out a submission or if he could just rain down ground and pound. But hats off to Omari uh, Akhmedov for uh, actually surviving 15 minutes with uh, former champion Chris Weidman. Uh, so what this means for Chris Weidman is uh, probably uh, probably somebody in the top 15, probably somebody like a Brad Tavares or something like that, that to somebody to get his confidence back up again and to see if he could actually compete with guys in the top 15 let, let alone guys in the top 10 or guys in the top five to see if he could systematically work his way back up to that title shot that coveted title that used to be his that is being held by Israel Asani that will be defended by uh by him against Paulo Costa so we will see it's going to be very interesting couple months um now Moving on to the main event with Derek Lewis and uh, Alexei Olenek. Uh, Alexei Olenek loves the ground game, and you very much saw that in the first round of this fight. Uh, he very much had superior position against Derek Lewis in this round, but in the second round, you saw something in Derek Lewis where he just came out with a flying knee and then came out with a hook, and it landed on Alexei Olenek, and then he got the knockout, and he got the knockout in devastating fashion. And uh, that's something you see out of Derek Lewis uh, quite often. Um, you actually see him kind of suffering defeat, and then from out of nowhere he'll from out of nowhere he'll land that one shot that matters, and all it takes is one in the heavyweight division in either MMA, kickboxing, or boxing uh, to make that one a fatal mistake. So, hats off to Derek Lewis. Uh, a really good job by Alexei Olenek by dominating the first round. But Derek Lewis, man, he his defensive jiu-jitsu is. Uh, very underrated his defensive grappling is very underrated his ability to get back to back up to his feet not only get back up to his feet but uh, even though he didn't do that in the first round but survive the round off of his back when he's in an inferior position uh positionally speaking but uh you know it it shows and you actually saw in uh, Derek lewis's physique that he was actually taking this fight uh, way more seriously I had heard that he'd actually changed his diet, was actually working more cardio for this fight, but uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting to see. Um, so Derek Lewis comes away your winner, as does Michael Chandler, as uh, uh, as uh, against uh, Benson Henderson. So Michael Chandler and Derek Lewis come away as your uh, weekend's winners for uh, this episode of Total Fight Mike. Um, so later on in the week, I will have a preview for uh, the rematch, the trilogy fight for uh, Stipe Miocic, the champion, the two-time champion now against uh, the former two-division champion and Daniel, Daniel Cormier. So it's going to be a really good one. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Uh, thank you so much to my editor, Patrick Lesnicki, and I will see you guys in the sequel. Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Stay safe.